All right, guys, thank you for watching today's video. My name is Spencer Smith. I'm a Baptist preacher. We talk about contemporary theological issues on this channel. Go ahead and hit your like button and subscribe to this channel if you're new. We're going to talk about this new movie coming out from Disney called Wish. And I've seen the trailer. I've, I've watched a lot of the stuff that's on it and a lot of the, the, the information that's out on it. And I want to tell you just right off the bat that this movie is going to be like Satanism repackaged. And I want to warn you about this movie uh, because there are messages that are put in these movies that are, uh, that are designed to pull your children away from God, away from the Bible, and ultimately poison their mind against the gospel. And I want to tell you about this, and I, I know I've said a lot already. That just sounds like the <laughs> that sounds like the rants of some crazy fundamentalist preacher, and uh, and so. But I, I think I have a good point. I want to share with you my ideas here. So basically, here's the idea of the movie. Here's the plot: is that there's this kingdom called Rosa, and uh, this kingdom is ruled by a man named King Magnifico. And ultimately, uh, there's this girl in the kingdom, and she goes to do an internship with him, and uh, she discovers somewhere along the way that this king could grant people's wishes, but he has actually chosen not to grant as many wishes as he could, and uh, thus tainting the moral character of, uh, of King Magnifico in the mind of this young lady. And so what she does is she actually decides that I'm going to go and find some sort of magic myself, and I am going to challenge King Magnifico, and I'm going to overthrow this bad guy who's in charge, and I'm going to usher in some sort of utopia. And for some reason, it has something to do with chickens, and I have no idea why. We'll find out, I guess, when the movie comes out. Uh, but uh, what she does is she, um, she actually calls upon uh, the typical Disney trope, she wishes upon a star, and this star comes down from the universe and gives her the ability to manipulate magic, and, and basically she becomes a witch, and she becomes a very powerful witch, but a good witch nonetheless, of course. And, uh, and then, of course, that's, that really is going to be the plot of the movie. So, guys, this is a typical... Gnostic movie. And if you study our Third Adam series and go watch all those, you have Third Adam 2, we talk about the, the pagan trinity, and Third Adam 3, we talk about Gnosticism and what that is and how uh, you're trying to break free from a system and things like that. And then also we talk about Third Adam 4, the, the false Holy Spirit and the power of all this magical stuff that's going on. And, um, and I want you to know this, when it comes to Disney movies, you have to understand that Walt Disney was actually a Freemason. And I, for really for a long time, that was a conspiracy to me. And I've asked people to prove it to me and many of them could not. So I went down the rabbit hole myself and I came out the other end saying, yes, he absolutely is a Freemason. Um, and I've got the proof to show you that. Uh, we were going to put it in third Adam four, but it just didn't fit. So we, we have, you know, there's really like a lost hour to third Adam four. And we're going to try to roll that out to you before too long. Uh, but guys, let me tell you this, there is, a, uh, there is going to be a satanic or Gnostic or Freemason slant in all of these movies. And I want you to know that Freemasonry and Christianity are completely opposite of each other. They are incompatible. There is no way that you can hold to the philosophies and the teachings of Freemasonry and call yourself a Bible-believing Christian. You just can't do it. They, they are total opposite. And really, my advice to you, if you are a Freemason, you're watching this video, my advice to you is to repent and believe the gospel and uh, trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be born again. And so here's what I want you to see. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain Gnosticism to you. And I'm going to interject points in this movie where this is a Gnostic movie, okay? Now, for example, let me give you what we're going to call Gnosticism 101 right here. Um, in Gnosticism, you have uh, something called the Demiurge. Now, let me just erase these arrows that I have here just to give you some clarity of thought as we go into this topic here. Um, you have this terrible, horrible being, this monster right here called the Demiurge. Now, the Demiurge is actually produced by Sophia. Sophia is the mother of the Demiurge. And this Demiurge created the world that you and I live in right now, and he created Adam and Eve. And uh, the God of Genesis 1 and, and Genesis uh, 3 that put them in the garden, that, that guy's a bad guy, and he's a horrible person, 
and he is a monster. He's very arrogant. He, uh, the Garden of Eden was not some beautiful utopia that Adam and Eve lived in. It was a prison in which they were locked in against their will. And, uh, and so one day they were freed by Lucifer. And, and so really that's, that's Gnostic theology, which sounds awful satanic because it is satanic. And so what happens is, is that eventually, uh, if, you, if you interpret the Bible through a Gnostic lens, you're going to see that, uh, you're going to believe, rather, that Jesus Christ came and He came into creation as some sort of high aeon God-like creature and He awakened something inside of mankind and told them there was a power inside of you and if you'll use and harness that power then you can break free of these terrible chains of this terrible arrogant demiurge, this bloodthirsty guy who told Joshua to go into the Canaan land and kill all the Canaanites, uh, this, this arrogant Gnostic demiurge who told everybody that you couldn't worship any other gods, this, this one who put out these Ten Commandments who said that uh, if you worship anybody else Besides me, you deserve the death penalty. That horrible creature is almost like you're in a toxic middle school boyfriend relationship with this guy. Uh, Jesus Christ came to set you free from all that stuff and break free from what they called the law. And, and that's how the Gnostics interpreted the Bible. And so if you will just harness this spirit power we'll give you, you can transcend and go up and be a part of all this. Now, here's what I want you to know. The pagan religions of history always have the same pattern. There's, there is a satanic trinity that is out there and it involves the Abraxas, the Christ, and the Sophia. Now the Abraxas is a creature that uh, the Knights Templar actually would put on uh, coins and things like that. The Abraxas is the, is the pagan or satanic equivalent uh, to God the Father. And, uh, and the name Abraxas is actually where we get the word abracadabra from. And uh, so that's a very interesting little piece of history there. And then Christ would be, of course, God the Son. And, of course, this is going to be a false Christ. And then Sophia is God the Spirit. Now, um, here's what I want you to know is that not only is Abraxas, uh, from a pagan standpoint, Abraxas would be the equivalent to Nimrod. Okay, and then you have Sophia, which would be Semiramis, right here. And uh, there's different spellings of that, so if I spell it different than what you are familiar with, forgive me. And, uh, and then we have right here, Tammuz. And so you got the pagan trinity is Abraxas, the father, or Nimrod. And then we have the, the Sophia, which is the Holy Spirit of paganism, and she, her name is Semiramis. And then you have the son of, of paganism, which is Tammuz or Christ. Here's, what, here's, where, uh, here's the missing piece that you need to have before you understand and, and for you to really understand this movie and why this is a terrible thing. She, this, this woman, this girl's name is Aisha, okay? And Asia depends on what etymology you get into, but her name literally means wish, and that's 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 one of the, that's why probably why the movie is called the Wish. Um, she actually butts heads with the demiurge, which is King Magnifico, and so she seeks a power. She realizes that the king, the the king of Rosa, I'm right this this right here. The kingdom of Rosa is a prison, and everybody in there is trapped in this. Terrible, terrible cult. And she realizes that this King Magnifico is the Demiurge, okay? So she reaches out and she, there's actually a scene where she's looking up to the sky and wishing upon a star. Now, that has been the trope for Disney. I mean, I remember that was, I think the first mention of that in the Disney movies was, uh, was Pinocchio a long time ago. And, uh, you know, that, which there's Gnosticism in Pinocchio as well. Uh, when you wish upon a star and this star creature comes down and teaches her how to, uh, how to harness all this power, that star that she wishes upon is the Gnostic Christ, okay? That's exactly who she's wished upon. Now, let me show you this, okay? You got, like I said, the pagan trinity. Here's how it worked as well. You have, you have this right here, that Abraxas, the God the Father, was the son. And if you notice, there's a, there's a vision in Ezekiel chapter 8 
where he faces east towards the sun. And you find there that they were weeping for Tammuz there in, in that vision of Ezekiel 8. It's very interesting reading. You ought to go check it out in your King James Bible. And then they were, there was the image of jealousy and that type of stuff. But facing east towards the sun was a pagan practice because they worshipped the sun god, which was Abraxas. And then you have Sophia. She was actually the moon. And so that's why like in a lot of uh, feminism and a lot of witchcraft, you see a lot of moon imagery is because they're trying to harness the power of Sophia. And of course, Sophia has many different names. Ashtoreth uh, in the book of Acts, her name is Diana and things of that nature. But also here, I want you to notice that the sun, moon, and, and also the, the Tammuz, the sun of the pagan trinity, is a star. So when you wish upon a star, you're calling upon the false Christ of Gnosticism. So really, uh, that little cutesy star figure that you have in, that, in this movie is going to be a picture of a Gnostic satanic Jesus is what that is. And so all of this here is, uh, is going to be how the movie is going to lay out. She's going to rise up against a demiurge, which is going to be Magnifico in the kingdom of Rosa, and she's going to transcend. And she's going to, <clears throat> when, when, when all these walls of all this break down, and when this demiurge is finally overthrown, she's going to usher in a utopia. She's going to usher in a wonderful world where, you know, we were held back by this guy, but when I'm in charge, when I lead everybody to this wonderful place, everybody's good dreams is going to come true. Everybody's wishes are going to be granted. And when we named Third Adam Four the road to Shambhala, that was the Tibetan Buddhist version of what we're talking about. It's, in the New Age, it's called the Age of Aquarius. Uh, it's also, I mean, really what it is, it is the satanic version of the millennial kingdom that is coming when Christ comes to rule and reign on this earth. So this movie is not going to be innocent. It's not going to be benign. It's going to have a very heavy Gnostic message to it. And okay, so with all of that being said so far, you guys should absolutely avoid this movie. And I'm going to tell you why. Because first and foremost, this movie is going to teach your children Gnosticism. And Gnosticism is Satanism. This is the idea that God is bad and that we need to try to call upon some magical powers to try to overthrow the demiurge of our lives. Now, I want to tell you something. Most people don't get this, but I, I, I wish more Christian people would get this. I wish more of these big name voices would understand what I'm about to say. Uh, and maybe they will in time. But all of this woke stuff that's happening out there today, this whole, I'm a, I'm a feminist, or I'm a, uh, you know, I, I'm a socialist, or I'm, I'm, we are, and we're victims of capitalism. All this idea that we are bound by a system is all born out of Gnosticism. That's really what it is at the end of the day. These people, uh, they, they play this victim card, and we need to overthrow this system because ultimately... They are Gnostics at heart. That's, that's why girls go into feminism, because they're, they went into Gnosticism first. And Gnosticism and feminism are inseparable. And so not only that, but I want you to know also that with these movies that are like this, uh, and we cover this in the Third Adam series, Thanos in the Marvel movies, the bad guy that came and invaded the Earth, tried to take over the Earth, he is Jesus in these movies. It's, it, is, it is the book of Revelation told from Satan's perspective. The whole thing's inverted. And that really is like the law of inversion. And Aleister Crowley talked about that kind of stuff as well. But uh, in this movie, I want you to know that, uh, that Magnifico, the, the bad guy, the one who could make all of your dreams come true, but he decides what's good for you and decides sometimes to not give you all of your wishes. He holds you back from all of these amazing things. People give their wishes to me. And I grant the wishes I am sure are good for Rosas. Some of these will never be granted. Not some, most. They deserve more than- I decide what everyone deserves. Magnifico is Jesus. Okay, that, that's who this guy is. And uh, so when you think about kids watching this movie, they're programmed with this whole skeleton mindset of thinking and God the Father and Jesus is the bad guy in this movie. And so that's who Magnifico is. 
Magnifico is Jesus Christ. And this girl is going to take on some sort of power, some spirit power from a star entity. That's going to be Satan. And so she is empowered by Satan to overthrow Jesus Christ. That is ultimately the message of this movie. Now, you may think that that's crazy, but that, that's what this is. This is Freemasonry. This is the occult. This is the inversion of religiosity. And this is what they're going to teach. So avoid this movie at all costs. Your children uh, will um, be poisoned by this movie. I promise you that. And guys, if you want more information on this, I, I, I'd encourage you to go check out our Third Adam series. I, I, I get messages from people all the time asking about, you know, why do you not believe in women preachers and the such like? And my first question is, do you, have you seen the Third Adam series? And unfortunately, there's still a bunch of people who have not seen this yet. And uh, so this, this star power that this Asia girl is going, to, is going to harness in this movie and start to use in this movie, that star power is going to be the occult ether energy force. That's exactly what she's going for. It is, it, she is going to be empowered by a satanic being to over, overthrow God which ultimately is what witchcraft is and ultimately what the new age is. Become your own God. And really the verse I want to give you here is in Genesis chapter 3. And uh, when, when Satan came to Eve and spoke to her, uh, it says there that uh, uh, verse number 4, And the servant said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Genesis 3, 4 and verse 5 says this, For God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So the idea of becoming your own God, being empowered and growing up and uh, going up and be joining this crowd right here, uh, that's New Age. Really, that's Luciferian doctrine. And that's what this movie is going to teach your family. So be aware of that. Be, be on guard. And uh, I know it's heavy stuff, but we're going to throw that at you and help you enjoy it. So subscribe to this channel if you're new. We're going to talk more about this kind of stuff going on. If you have not seen the Third Adam series yet, I know they're very long films, but please take the time uh, to go watch those, and I know you'll be blessed for it. And also, uh, if you want more information on stuff like this, we wrote a book called Call the Evil, Good, the Lie of Christian Rock and Roll, available now on Amazon. You can check that out in the link in the description below. And uh, we pray that this video is a help to you. I know this is heavy stuff, heavy stuff. Uh, but we are, this is what we do. This is what we talk about here. And I know that there's good information we can throw at you. So go check out our Third Adam series. And if you have not done so, they will bless you. They help you have a, a worldview of understanding what all the occultism is out there in the world today. I know you will enjoy it. Guys, have a great day. We'll see you next time.